So we've looked at the concept of data tables, looked at a super simple example. How does it work in real life? In this video, I'm going to take you through a super powerful application. I hope it inspires you to use data tables in your own work. Let's get into this email from Milan. Thank you, Milan, for sending this in. So he's from Melbourne over in Australia. Now he needs to create a spreadsheet and he's working in the garage door industry. So when he's putting these garage doors together, He's using panels and there's two panel sizes, one 500 mil, one 610 mil. So he wants to be able to put a desired height into a spreadsheet and for the spreadsheet to tell him immediately, tell him the best combination of these two panel sizes. And that's exactly what we've done in the spreadsheet file. You can download it, work along with me. So for example, uh, we put the target height in here. We've got 2,450 in here at the moment. If I change this to 1,540, we can see the mod model immediately updates, gives us the best possible combination, also tells us the closest height and the excess. So we've got a model working, giving us this instant feedback. How does it work? Data tables are the key here. In this video, I'm going to take you through this model, the important features, particularly the data table, so you can understand how it all works. So firstly, starting in the top left, we cannot have a data table without a model and a model consists of input, process and output. That's exactly what we've got in our file here. We've got two input cells, which is the number of panel ones to order, the number of panel twos to order. Then we have our output cells here. It's also got some workings in. This is our output cell, which gives us the total size of that combination of panels. And we can see it's just a simple, um, some arithmetic there, and that is making the model work. So we've got a, a model with input, process and output. That means we can have a data table and all the data table is doing is testing lots of values, putting them in the model and telling us the outputs for those values. And we've got our data table here. I'm going to delete and rebuild this ta data table. That's important because it allows us to deal with deleting a data table, amending a data table. You'll find if you try to delete part of a data table, you get this dialog box popping up. We can't change part of a data table. This can be annoying. So if we want to change a data table, we have to delete the whole thing, which is what I'm going to do here. Just hitting delete. and I'm going to delete the top left cell as well. So remember, we need to have the layout in place first in order to get the data table working. So in the row, I've got my panel one candidate values in the column. I've got the panel two candidate values. In this particular example, the candidate values are the same, but you could use any candidate values and any number of candidate values. That's how powerful data tables are. I've got four candidate values. You could have 40 or 400, whatever works for you. But we've got our layout there, our setup is there. So we know next we need to link to the output cell and ask ourselves, what kind of data table is this? We know we've got one-way data tables, we've got two-way data tables. In this instance, we're dealing with two input cells, so we want a two-way data table. That means that our output cell goes in the top left corner of the table. So I've got an equals in there now, I'm going to link to our output cell in E4 and that completes our data table setup. You know, a lot of people find data tables stressful. I do a lot of the time. You can avoid the stress by really working through it step by step, making sure the layout is right, making sure the output cell is linked properly. If you work through the steps, you can minimize uh, the stress. So we're ready to put the data table in. Now we have to select everything the column headers, the row headers, and the output cell. I'm going to use the Windows shortcut, Alt-A-W-T, but you can just go to the uh, Data tab, and then What If Analysis, which will be over on the right. So the row input cell, well, in the row, we've got Panel 1. Where's the Panel 1 input cell? That's in D4. Then in the column, the column input cell, well, it's Panel 2 in the column, and that's in D5. So we've got D4 and D5 as our input cells and this is the magic of data tables i can just hit ok now and all of the values just pop up there excel's done all that analysis in the background 
hopefully you're beginning to appreciate the power of this technique. So it's a good idea at this point just to do a bit of testing. So I'm gonna put four panels, four panel ones, one panel two, that gives me a value of 2,940. So it does appear to be accurate. So that's how the data table is working in this instance. But you might be thinking, well, Chris, we need more than that because how do we get to this situation where we're able to make the recommended combination for a particular target height? Well, we need to do a little bit of work with the data table and formally working with data tables can be a very powerful mechanism. We're gonna see how this particular mechanism uh, works here. So we've got our, our table that's doing some calculations. What is the table doing? Well, it's looking at the difference between the value in the data table, so the outputs for each combination, looking at the difference between the outputs and the target height there. And our logic is the lowest difference between the height for this combination and the desired target height that's the one we're interested in, the lowest difference. So we need to work out all of the differences. How are we going to do that? Let's rebuild the formulae. So I need to know the difference between the value in this cell. We're gonna have one formula corresponding to each output and the desired target height. And this target height cell, uh, I want that reference to remain the same. Uh, we're going to copy these formulae across the table. I want that reference to remain the same. So I'm putting an absolute reference, F4 key on the PC. We can see we've got the dollar signs in there. Also, at this point, I'm going to make this an absolute um, value using the abs formula. That means that we won't be dealing with positive and negative values because we're dealing with the difference between two things. We'll just have positive values. That's going to make it easier to analyze later. So I'm going to hit enter there and 430, does that look reasonable? Quick test, 1,110 and 1,540. Yes, the difference is 430. So let's control C and then control Alt V and F to paste the formula across the table. And we can see it's pasted across the table. Again, it's a good idea to just check a couple of formulae. Are we pointing to the right cells, particularly when you've used a relative reference and an absolute reference as we just did. So just check a couple of the cells and yes, that looks reasonable. So all of these things coming together, synergizing together, it's a good idea to understand how each part is working. They create magic when they're all together. So what's the next part? Well, we've, we can see in the table, we've got our best combination. We can see it in the table, but I don't want to say to Milan, um, listen, you just have to look at the table to get the best combination. That means he's doing kind of manual work himself. And I want the best combination to appear up here. So how are we going to do that? Well, if we put some more min formulae or a min formula in here, I just say, give me the minimum value from uh, this column. Then we're going to just drag that across and then do the same things for the rows. Give me the min value, the minimum value for the uh, this row, and then take that down. We can now look at all these min formulae and pick out, not only pick out the smallest value, but pick out the particular combination of panels that gives us uh, that value. And we can see these working cells below are doing exactly that. So we've got a min formula and a match formula. I'm gonna put them in again, so you can see how to, how to create them. So this formula, is gonna look across the other min formulas that we just created. So we've got lots of formulae, a chain of formulae working together now. That's a common feature of powerful Excel models. Uh, yes, we've got the min value there. And then we want to know, okay, how far across this range, how far across this range is that minimum value? If we can establish that, then we can say how many panels give us that, uh, that minimum value. So how do we do that? Using the match formula, looking up this value in this array. So this range of cells and then comma and then zero at the end. So that's just outside of your screenshot, but you can see in the formula editor uh, at the top what's going on there. Okay, so the match formula is in and the match formula is saying, yeah, so for, um, for panel one, so one panel one gives us this combination. Then all we have to do 
is link our cell at the top. It's always a good idea to put the important information at the top of the spreadsheet so you're not asking somebody to look around the spreadsheet or to have to scroll to the bottom to find the important information. We're just linking that cell to the top that gives us this nice input output console at the top. So all our customer has to do, all Milan has to do is put the target value in here. Let's go 2,193 and we can see the combination is flashing up there. So that's it. That's the power of data tables. And yeah, I hope from this series you've understood the concept. We had a simple example, example to begin with and then we've looked at the application. I hope it inspires you to try data tables in your work. Let me know in the comments, how did you get on with this video series? Have you managed to get data tables working for you? I'll see you in another video on the channel.